On October 2nd, outside the Happy Valley Amusement Park in Wuhan, a middle-aged woman chased after a young man, hitting him while yelling, Why are you stealing my business? The young man dodged while holding his head, shouting back, What are you doing? Why are you hitting me? It turns out that the young man was unhappy with the woman selling disposable raincoats at the entrance for a high price. She was buying them for a few cents and selling them for 20 to 30 yuan. So he decided to buy a pack of raincoats online and sell them at a lower price outside the amusement park. The young man's raincoats cost him 6 yuan and he sold them for 10 yuan. Since his price was cheaper and the quality was better, business was booming. As a result, the woman chased him down and started attacking him. Her reasoning was simple. This is my territory. I make the rules. If I say you can't sell, then you can't sell. In Taiyuan, Shanxi, another woman wearing a red armband stopped people with disabilities from setting up stalls and shouted loudly, I'm the boss of this area. No business license, no temporary residence permit, no health permit, no papers at all. You can't sell sugar-covered hawthorns for 10 yuan. No one can. This is my area. I'm in charge. Even if it's your parents, they can't sell here. What right did she have to kick out the vendors? She claimed she was enforcing the law. When a police officer asked her where she got the red armband, she said it was given to her by the military. The officer replied that law enforcement was up to the city inspectors, but the woman insisted that this was her territory and that even people with disabilities couldn't set up stalls here. People online joked that territories in China have become personal property, that everything has been contracted out. Chinese middle-aged women have always been known for not following the rules. If they did, the world would be a much quieter place. In another incident, a woman crossed the street without a care for speeding cars, completely ignoring the traffic lights. A black car swerved to avoid her and ended up crashing into a traffic light pole. To save herself a few steps, another woman decided to climb over the barrier in the middle of the road. She struggled to get over the fence, and when she tried to climb down, her skirt got caught, leaving her hanging upside down on the barrier. The sight was quite comical. Then there's the most audacious one. She tried to cross the street, but didn't want to use the crosswalk. She just knocked down the barrier in her way and made her own path. A middle-aged woman was reserving a parking spot for her family by standing in it. When a female driver arrived and asked her to move, the woman refused. The driver called the police, but the woman sat on the ground, throwing a tantrum and crying loudly. The police, seeing that she wouldn't move, used pepper spray on her. The woman began crying even harder, maybe from the pepper spray. In the end, the traffic police physically removed her from the parking spot. In another incident, a middle-aged woman was riding a bus, and when it came to the final stop, she refused to get off. The driver repeatedly asked her to leave, but she remained seated. We've reached the stop. It's time to get off. I'm not getting off. I don't want to. Why don't you want to get off? This is the last stop. I just don't want to. What's it got to do with you that we've arrived? Who else should care if not me? You're still on the bus. So what are you going to do? We're done for the day. I need to clock out. Then clock out. I'm not getting off. If I clock out, what are you going to do sitting in the bus? Everyone else got off. Are you planning to steal something? What valuable things do you have for me to steal? Go ahead, let me steal. Who are you? Why would I let you steal? It's the final stop. Get off. Why are you bothering me? Who do you think you are? I'm just a driver. Nobody special. Well, I'm still not getting off. I don't know if there's something wrong with her brain or what. It's common for these middle-aged women to ignore rules, but sometimes they disregard even basic common sense. In another case, a woman on an electric bike was waiting for a red light next to a large truck. The traffic officer kindly warned her to stay further away from the truck. It's dangerous if the truck turns. Look, if you stand here, the truck might run over your feet. Move back a bit. The truck is long. It needs space to turn. Just be patient for a moment. The woman didn't listen at all. When the light turned green, she followed closely behind the large truck. The traffic officer shouted, but in the blink of an eye, the woman was knocked down by the truck. The officer quickly had the truck reverse a bit to pull her out, saying, Are you alright? See, I warned you earlier. People online commented, These women are really fearless. They disregard everything. But sometimes you have to bear the consequences of ignoring everything. Speaking of Chinese middle-aged women, we can't forget square dancing. They've brought their dance moves to every corner of the world.
On October 3rd, at Chongqing Airport, a group of women waiting for their flight started showing off what they believed were graceful dance moves in the airport lounge. In a crowded area, they turned on loud music and started dancing with total ease. The passengers waiting for their flights were extremely bothered. Unable to tolerate it any longer, they called the airport staff. After the staff tried to persuade the women to stop, they paid no attention and continued dancing enthusiastically. One staff member said, We don't have any law enforcement power. We can only keep advising them, hoping they'll turn down the volume. This is to provide other passengers with a quieter environment. Some people jokingly remarked, You've got to hand it to these women. Who knows where their dancing journey will end? Have you ever seen dancing like this? At one of the busiest intersections, they took over the road. Traffic on both sides came to a halt, creating a massive traffic jam. Another scene showed a group of elegantly dressed women in matching long dresses, holding decorative paper umbrellas as they gracefully crossed the street. It was as if they were not in the middle of a busy road, but on a runway, showing off their model like steps and graceful poses. Traffic was completely blocked, and the traffic police had to run over to clear the way. The audacity of these elderly men and women in China is truly something that can challenge your worldview. First of all, their ability to extort people is second to none. It's hard to believe that even in 2024, good Samaritans are being falsely blamed for the accidents they help. In Nanjing, a young man named Yang Fan was cycling when he saw an elderly man who fell down drunk. He noticed the man's head was about to get run over by a car, so he went to help him up. In fact, there were plenty of people around, but no one else planned on helping. Yang asked the man for his family's phone number so they could come quickly. Unexpectedly, the man said, So, you hit me, didn't you? Yang was speechless and immediately denied it. The people nearby also confirmed that Yang hadn't hit him, and the man had fallen by himself. When the traffic police arrived, they confirmed that the man had fallen due to being drunk. But things didn't end there. The man's son arrived, irrationally insisting that Yang had hit his father and demanded compensation. Fortunately, video footage and witnesses proved Yang's innocence. But just imagine if there had been no security cameras and no witnesses, would Yang have been wrongfully blamed? If you help the elderly, you risk being extorted. But if you don't help, you could also be blamed. What kind of society is this? When I was crossing the street just now, he fell over, and they wouldn't let me leave. Are you accusing me of trying to extort you? I'm definitely not doing that. This bracelet of mine is worth over a thousand yuan, and it broke when I fell. Look at my injuries. I can't get up. I can't move. It turns out that the elderly man was riding an electric bike with the woman on the back. They accidentally fell over and then stopped a female college student passing by, demanding that she pay them 1,000 yuan as compensation for medical expenses. Their reason? They claimed she saw them fall but didn't come to help. The student was at a loss, facing two unreasonable seniors. With no other choice, she called the police. The girl explained that she was a student at a local university. On the day of the incident, she had just finished class and was walking home. As she approached the intersection, she noticed the elderly man speeding by on his electric bike with the woman on the back. To avoid a collision, the girl stopped and waited for them to pass. However, due to the man's high speed, they lost control and both fell heavily to the ground. The kind hearted girl didn't know what to do. Before she could react, the man grabbed her arm and accused her of causing the accident by making him swerve. The woman had sustained serious injuries, and they demanded compensation from her. People online commented, In this country, you can't even be a decent person anymore. If you help an elderly person up, you'll have to pay. But if you don't help, you still have to pay. If you don't help, it's 1,000 yuan. If you do help, you might end up bankrupt. Because of this, people collapse on the streets and no one pays attention anymore. Bystanders rush past, ignoring those in need of help. China, with its 5,000 years of civilization, now only seems to have coldness, greed, and selfishness left. Netizens wonder, what has made people like this? Are Chinese people born indifferent? No, it's because they can't afford to help anyone. Helping others has become too risky. Even judges say, if you didn't hit them, why did you help them up? People are afraid of risking their futures and their families for the conscience of a stranger. No one dares to take that chance anymore. Sadly, in China's current social environment, it's not just the elderly who try to extort others, young people have learned how to do it too. In another case, a man found a 17 year old girl's phone and kindly returned it. But this led to trouble. The girl wasn't grateful at all. Instead, she accused him of stealing 200 yuan that she claimed was hidden in the phone case. It's a classic example of no good deed going unpunished.
Nowadays, it's better to avoid getting involved. If the man hadn't picked up the phone, he wouldn't have faced all this hassle. He did the right thing by returning the phone, only to end up at the police station, wasting time and getting upset. In this environment, who would dare to do a good deed? In another strange case in Wei Fang, a convenience store owner encountered something bizarre. A tall young man wearing a mask came into the store to buy a pack of cigarettes. After paying, he pulled out his ID card and said, "I'm under 18, and you just sold me cigarettes, so you need to compensate me 10,000 yuan." A netizen lamented, "We haven't solved the problem of elderly scammers, and now the kids are at it too." In the past. We only heard about the elderly staging accidents, but today we see how young people scam the elderly. A young man in white continuously bumped into an older man in front of him. When the elderly man turned around and pushed him back, the young man pretended to fall, immediately blaming the older man. The entire Chinese society has turned into a distorted and dysfunctional place where both the elderly and the young are faking accidents to extort each other. In another case, a group of people had a dispute. The men started faking falls, and the women followed, arguing and then pretending to fall as well, resulting in everyone lying on the ground. Netizens joked that in such situations, if people don't fake falls, the police will handle it with one person ending up in the hospital and the other in the police station. It's not just during scams that the elderly display arrogance. In everyday situations, they also behave domineeringly. On a plane, an elderly man took another passenger's window seat. When the female passenger arrived and asked him to leave, he refused. Frustrated, she called a flight attendant, who explained that the elderly man's assigned seat was in the aisle. However, he insisted on sitting by the window, saying that it didn't matter where he sat. The flight attendant responded, "This isn't a bus, sir." But the elderly man wouldn't give up the seat, even telling the woman not to be too stubborn. Another elderly man got into a dispute with someone on the train. Not only did he speak harshly, but he also kicked over the other person's suitcase. As for the elderly women, their fighting spirit is equally impressive, making it clear that the younger passengers were no match for them. Some may argue that blaming the poor behavior of China's elderly is too one-sided, because unfortunately, the entire society seems to reflect these behaviors. On October 1st, the CCP's National Day, what stood out besides the overwhelming sea of red and massive crowds was the mountain of garbage left behind. Some joked that every holiday in China is a disaster for sanitation workers. A viral video showed that at 6 a.m. that morning, many people had gathered in Tiananmen Square for the ceremony. Once the crowd cleared, the square was littered with garbage, and multiple sanitation workers were cleaning nonstop. Aside from Beijing, other cities across China also held flag raising ceremonies for National Day. On October 1st, at Tianfu Square in Chengdu, Sichuan, after the flag raising ceremony, the ground was littered with trash, leaving the entire area in disarray. A vlogger commented, "The Everyone came to watch the flag raising, but after it was over, all that's left is garbage. It's too much. In Nanchang, Jiangxi, a similar scene unfolded after the flag raising ceremony at Baiyi Square. The ground was covered in trash. One person said, "Honestly, we're all here to have fun, and everyone has good intentions. But could we please not litter? I'm really fed up with these people who throw trash everywhere. They're just terrible. The place is filled with garbage." And someone even fell just now, breaking their suitcase. The sanitation workers can't keep up with the cleaning. Many Nanchang locals commented that while Baiyi Square is a tourist attraction for outsiders, those who grew up in Nanchang never bother watching the ceremony. A blogger sarcastically remarked, "Throwing trash is also a form of patriotism." You open your Facebook page, all the people are watching the ceremony. Recently, social media has been flooded with posts of people watching flag raising ceremonies. Not only are more people claiming to be patriotic, but the quality of behavior is also supposedly improving. According to reports, trash cans at flag raising squares across the country have decreased by more than one percent compared to last year. Some people argue that although it still looks terrible, this suggests that more people are showing patriotism. However, others disagree, saying that patriotism is not an excuse for bad behavior. Someone jokingly asks artificial intelligence. If throwing trash could be considered an expression of love for the country, after thinking for a long time, the AI responded, "Who are you trying to fool?" Netizens had different reactions to the litter left behind after the ceremonies. Comments included, "It's fine, just leave the trash for the Chinese Communist Party." It's no surprise to see trash in trashy places. 
It's the same every year. But why is the littering even worse this year? Schools are forcing every student to write reflections on the flag raising. That's why so many people are watching it. And then they claim there are patriotic crowds at Tiananmen Square every day. Another user questioned, if people were more educated and started demanding multi-party systems and the separation of powers, could the Communist Party still rule China? In reality, the issue of littering isn't limited to flag-raising ceremonies. Every holiday, tourist sites across the country are filled with trash. During the National Day holiday, the Mingsha Mountain scenic area in Dunhuang was overwhelmed with litter. Despite 2,000 sanitation workers cleaning tirelessly, it still took four to five days to remove all the trash. Items like plastic bags, water bottles, and paper were scattered across the area, not only ruining the natural beauty of the site, but also potentially causing irreversible harm to the local environment. This isn't the first time such incidents have occurred on Mingsha Mountain. Similar pollution problems were reported in 2014 and 2017, both requiring significant manpower and resources for cleanup. Even kindergartners know not to throw trash around, and trash bins are often only just a few steps away. So why do these adults litter so carelessly? In the eyes of many Chinese people, rules are often seen as nothing more than signs. The Nine Bends and 18 Turns scenic area in Xinjiang has attracted many visitors. For safety reasons, the area is fenced off, and visitors are prohibited from crossing the barriers. However, despite warnings from the staff, elderly men and women climbed over the railing to take better photos. Even when staff members personally tried to move them away, their efforts were in vain. On October 2nd, at a tourist spot in Shanxi, a man climbed onto the head of the statue of Yu the Great, calling for his family to join him for a photo. Yu the Great is revered as one of the ancestors of the Chinese people. His contributions are not just in flood control and national development, but in transitioning ancient tribal societies into the political state system that has shaped Chinese civilization for thousands of years. His legacy is deeply respected. It's said that ignorance breeds fearlessness. Indeed, faithless individuals in China seem to fear nothing, whether it's their ancestors or the Buddha. On January 31, 2024, a man climbed over a fence to the top of the Lushan Giant Buddha in Sichuan and urinated there. The Lushan Giant Buddha is the largest stone-carved Buddha in China and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Buddhism entered China during the Western Han Dynasty, more than 2,000 years ago. After the Chinese Communist Party came to power, it propagated atheism. And during the Cultural Revolution, temples were destroyed, and all forms of religion were banned. This destruction of the traditional reverence for heaven and the divine has led to a severe loss of faith among most Chinese people today. Let's take a look at how China's generations from the 1950s and 60s were raised. During the Cultural Revolution, the CCP taught them violence, replacing the traditional values of modesty, kindness, and respect for the divine. Decades later, these former Red Guards and Red Soldiers still live in the shadows of that indoctrination, unable to escape the era's lingering illusion. A netizen asked, can a society where morality has completely collapsed still have hope? The CCP has tried for years to promote moral campaigns, but these efforts have only aimed to make people fully dedicate their soul and wealth to the party, with no real responsibility for the well-being of the people. It's a system completely devoid of any contractual sense of responsibility. The result is loud slogans, but the reality is a society plagued by moral decay and mutual strife. Mm -hmm.